if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, I uh, just got a surprise phone call. Let me get this out of here. From uh, the guy that I bought this motorcycle from. And I just think it's kind of wild. It's my birthday. He didn't know it was my birthday. I thought, hey, this is kind of a treat. And he just said, hey, I was going through my phone and uh, I, I just like to stay connected to you. And it just uh, amazes me how connected we can be to a motorcycle, right? Like how much it can mean to us. So I was telling him... Uh, that I still had it, that I hadn't rode it in a couple of years and kind of just filling them in on that I did ride it. Let me show you the bike. And anyway, we got talking. I started telling him all the stuff, you know, that I had found and what I had happened. And I, I've been able to gain some stuff because I started thinking a couple of times since I've owned this, people have actually sent me gifts. And I'm almost positive that this one came on my birthday one year. Um... Uh, just way cool, man. There's such awesome people out here. Anyway, I was telling David, David's his name. I don't know if he wants people to know who he is, so I'm not going to share his last name just to be uh, be fair on privacy. But when I bought this motorcycle, uh, I found it on eBay. It was a, just a crazy cool story. I ended up meeting Lance Holtz for the first time uh, because someone on Facebook said, hey, you got to check this guy coming out to California. So that was a cool story. And then I met one of the... Uh, uh, journalist at Rider Magazine. That guy was actually selling it from Chris's Corner. It was so cool. It's just such an awesome trip. It was epic. But it came with a bunch of the history and a bunch of the documentation. Uh, check this out. This is so cool. So I have the Motorcyclist Magazine uh, for the 1976s on the 860 GT. This is a this is a 75, but it's had a lot of confusion about the motorcycle. I'm going to talk about that in a second and why. But when I originally, oh, these uh, some of these other really cool ads, like, okay, so look at that. Look at the gas tank, the side covers, and real quickly, look at the motorcycle with the cafe kit. Tell me that's not freaking stinking cool. You know, just so you know, I mean, this is a rider. I bought it and uh, rode it in Iowa. Actually, uh, one time. Uh, I went with a student and we hopped down to a bike night, uh, 125 miles one way, and went and met up with the American Pickers uh, guys, or actually Frank off American Pickers, and like everybody at that bike night in some small town in, uh, in uh, southwestern Iowa was just, you know, drooling over this bike. It was really cool. But originally when I got it, I got this copy of this, this issue of this magazine, and once again, one of you cool – fans, friends, whatever, said, hey, you know what? I've got what I think is a mint, a, uh, a mint condition issue of that. So I have uh, the 75 issue of Cycle World about this bike, Ducati's refined 860 V-Twin, and then the Motorcyclist 76. So it's just freaking cool. It came with the manuals. Um, I don't remember which one, but I remember this one with the rusted out paper clip on it. I just didn't want to take it apart and didn't want to ruin it. So I've gotten other copies. I've got some digital copies. It's just so freaking stinking cool. Uh, some restoration stuff. I had a customer, or excuse me, a fan send me this. This was way cool. This book on restoring Ducatis. And what if, if you don't know the history, which I didn't, wait till I show you that. And that I'm super excited about those. But if you don't know the history of these, they started out uh, as the single cylinder, so it just would have had basically this, right? And the bevel drive was unique in its design because there's no chains. It's it's, it's gears. You have to see the inside of this. It's so freaking sexy. Maybe I'll find a picture of it in one of the manuals. But it's literally gear drive all the way up through through a bevel drive through the head. So they have a unique sound. Uh, they're pretty noisy motor because of all the gear drive. Uh, but they're just su it's super sick. It's its own thing. So Ducati had the 250s, 350s, 450s, where it was a single cylinder sitting about right here. And then they added the second cylinder. I think it started at a 750, and then they did 860s, 900s, went on, so on and so on. But just really cool history. So a lot of the recommendations in these restoration stuff for a single cylinder would be very easy to adapt to a, to a V-twin. 
it is a 90 degree v-twin so it's just stupid fun to ride uh back when i bought it uh it actually i got i don't know a couple hundred miles on. i rode it the the weekend i bought it with the guy and it was really funny it's a fiberglass tank okay and see if i can get this baby open one-handed see it's just fiberglass tank um but it had uh cracked from the original installation honestly wasn't the best and and the tank had rubbed the frame and and developed a leak of course when i bought it it's actually got a few more leaks coming through now which bummed me out so you can see where a little leaks coming there because what i've tried doing well let me back up a little bit i bought the bike to restore it and basically to try and prove or showcase that that i had uh the abilities to restore motorcycles. I was really growing with how to wrench. I was kind of torn between, well, how much of this is going to be education and how much of it's going to be actual service work. And so being fascinated, uh, about being able to work on really exotic bikes for other people, you know, especially bikes that you wouldn't own. Sometimes that's the reason us we get into being a motorcycle technician is just the the thrill of and access to stuff that that we're never going to purchase. So way cool. So I bought this thing thinking, I'm going to restore this. I'm going to make it an epic how to wrench, you know, showcase model to show everything that we can do or how we would get it accomplished, right? And then create some content on it. But when I bought the bike and when I showed up, I knew I was in trouble on day one because the patina on this thing is just too cool. Let's get close again. I mean, it's funny. People have seen this like in the distance in photos and went, oh, what's the spider web paint job? It's not. That's actually just cracks in the paint. Uh, this is all original from 1975. This is an actual Corbin seat. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The cafe. The battery was actually hidden here. This is such an awesome story. I see Alan Atwood is on the video right now. But Alan, check this out. Check this out. Da -da 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 -da. You remember this? This dude, I broke down. Uh, showing off and just beating the heck out of the motorcycle. And we didn't know at the time, but I sheared uh, a keyway in the gear drive. And we broke down at this old farmer's house. I don't know why I'm putting this away. It's too funny of a story. We broke down at this old farmer's house. And the only way that the dude would uh, let us pull in the driveway and like hang out and use his property as if he could witness to us. And he actually went out and gave us all Bibles. I know for sure one other student said he still has this in his toolbox and what an epic day that was. But man, I was honking along on this thing uh, to a restaurant back in Iowa. No, no actually Nebraska uh, called Bob's Bar. They were known for like these huge burgers. They were on uh, 2020 back in the day in the 80s. And it was an epic motorcycle ride hangout place. So break down in front of this farmer's house, just hanging this thing to the wind. Uh, long story short, uh, Alan and the guys actually went back, got a pickup. We had to haul the thing home, have my head between my legs. I thought, man, I'll never be able to afford to fix this. You know, it's going to be too exotic and too hard to fix. And when you go in the service manual to get to this gear drive, they want you to time it from the gear case, right? From the, from the crankshaft, I should say. So you line up some gears, you put the dots on, you go here, you go here, you go here. Matter of fact, I wonder... There's pro oh you know what? These are pretty stinking cool. Or if I can get lucky enough. I guess I'm live, so what do I care? I can you guys can always fast forward this. Let's see by chance. If I could ooh, we're getting somewhere. So basically you're lining up these gears, and then that gear lines up that gear, that gear goes on up, and then you just keep working your way all the way up. Anyway, that's how they want you to do it, okay? That's like most every motorcycle in the world is starts at the crankshaft and then works their way up. Wasn't really planning on doing this, so I don't have any pages, like, ready. Some more gears. Anyway, I'm going to fast forward my story. So, I was not going to pull this motor. The exhausts are still seized to the head. I never tried any... Uh, I didn't try any more tricks or anything to get them unseized because it was just a great running motorcycle. And when I realized it still had good compression, it still had good leak down numbers, I was just like, what the heck is is going on? I guess I 100% didn't know that one had compression yet. But so what we did is once I uh, peeled off this Lu uh, Lucas electronic converted uh, ignition right there, 
everything just fell out of there, just fell into pieces. There was no Loctite or, or retainer on the nut on the end of the camshaft. And basically after enough miles or enough time, it vibrated off. And all that happened was we lost spark happening at the right time, but we didn't know that, right? Just didn't know that. Um, so now that I'm thinking about it, I was able to do a compression test on that because I remember actually on the side of the road, Alan might remember this, where uh, we were trying to fix this in the gravel and we pulled the spark plugs and put my thumb over the spark plug hole and, and it's kick only, by the way. I had to have somebody kick it over and it felt like it had great compression. It was super, super scary and confusing. I'll tell you that. Uh, so anyway... I, I start measuring the little keyway and find out that it was a five millimeter keyway, start looking at Ducati or whatnot, and, and I literally found a five millimeter keyway at Harbor Freight, believe it or not. And we got back together, got it going, uh, dynoed the thing, made 66 rear wheel power, which was pretty impressive out of a 1975 860 90 degree V-twin. Okay, so for example, like an 883 Sporty makes in the 40s you know, to try and compare apples to apples of CCs and size and whatnot. So 66 at the rear wheel, I'm telling you, this thing was stupid fun to ride. It was also stupid difficult to ride because this bike has actual like cafe rear sets. I told you it was kick only. Uh, and they're on the wrong side of the motorcycle. This is actually the shifter. Okay. And the brake is on the left side. Crazy confusing, but it gets worse. It's actually one up and five down, so it's a reverse, so it's what we call MotoGP shift pattern or race shift pattern, people call it. So it, it not only shifts the wrong direction, but on the wrong side of the bike, because believe me, it's difficult to ride. Uh, but it's just fun, fun and exotic. It's way, way, way cool. But after looking into this, we found out that Ducati still used that same five millimeter keyway. And I kid you not, I like ordered one out of some late model, you know, 996 motor or something that they still use. Actually, one of these ordered the keyway out of, out of one of those. And that's what's in there right now. It's still something they use in production day. So it was such an awesome day. I know we had such a, such a great time riding the food and even though it broke down. And what was shocking too is how amazing the bike handled. So it's got still braided brake lines. It's got the aftermarket wheels, obviously the body kit, uh, the AP brake I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, uh, the shocks are aftermarket. And what's really cool about that is I got the original black and white catalog to where you could go purchase this bike. Let's see what we got here. So we've got some retail prices here. 860 GT back in the day. $34.95. And this says in Canada, which if this is an actual Canadian model that was brought in, it would make sense because in 1975, this shifter should not be on, on this side of the bike. In 1975, all bikes brought in the U.S. were uh, mandated to have a standardized left side shifter. So that's why you saw a lot of Triumphs, and BSAs, the Sportster and everything where everybody 75 on is supposed to be on left side of the bike with the brake on the right side. Not this one. It's a titled 75, but it's on the wrong side. So I'm going to guess it's a Canadian import. But check this out. So here's the story I got and why the phone call is so epic is that the story I got, there's that body kit. And they put this kind of interesting little, I'd never seen anybody do something like this, this little handmade windshield. You could see they're just, you know, little handmade brackets. You could see my little uh, Sharpie uh, or dry erase markers on there from really riding it on the road. These would be different intersections I wanted to turn on. So that's not staring at your phone or GPS. Um, way cool. But um, I do have the cafe fairing with that same patina is the rest of the bike it came with it as well. These are really cool because they have a, a headlight uh, protector instead of the headlights like just sticking out of it. Uh, this packing tape we put on in California, I was worried about the headlight bezel just falling out going down the road. This custom tack mount. This thing is just so stupid, stupid cool, stupid fun. Uh, but anyway, in this black and white catalog here, it actually has all the accessories. There's the front fender, the K&Ns that are on it, right? The big carbs, the brake kits. There's the cafe seat. Uh, this, I have this tool to pull them dang exhausts off there seized on there. There's the wheels, right? I mean, 
this thing, the fairing's a little different unless they cut it. They might have cut the, who knows if it wrecked one time or something, they cut the edges off. Um, the Bassani exhaust, I mean, like everything is in here. And the story, the story that I got was that it's had two owners. So I had the original owner and uh, from the phone call today, David said what he's going to do is he's going to put this in an email and like put all the documented history that he knows about it to me so we could keep it with the bike. But an actor in L.A. bought it uh, who I believe was an artist as well. David's an artist, uh, spent his life in L.A., and he had this bike forever. He just loved it. He just got to a point with the, the kick only and not riding it. He decided it really needed to go somewhere. And it was interesting when he called today because he said uh, – um, he just loves knowing that the bike like didn't get chopped up or destroyed or, and, and that it's, uh, well, what, what he says, he's like, I just love that it's still, you know, being road and so on. It made me feel guilty, right? I was like, dang, this thing sat for two years because all this other stuff has taken a, taken a priority or demand over it. So I thought, you know what? Uh, I gotta somehow get this onto the list of bikes this year because all you gotta do is clean carbs throw a battery in it i want to clean up a bunch of electrical connections i wasn't thrilled with uh i had a lot of volt drops the lights were dim things like that uh i ain't gonna lie when i got this bike like i put fresh fuel in it put carb kits in there there's a work order it shows where i did compression tests dyno it carb kits you know i tightened things up and then i just rode the shit out of it so there was that summer where uh i had so much fun riding this and then i moved i think it i think it was the next year but we need to bring this back to life. So one thing I could use your help on, and I'll tag some people once this video is done. Hey, thanks for the birthday wishes there, Jane. Uh, one of the things I'll do is uh, tag some people that I think might be able to help on this. And I'm not asking for something for free. I'd be more than glad to pay for it. But there was a time where I had a boo-boo, and I, 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 it was probably the only time I've ever cried over a motorcycle, but I was backing up my boat back in Iowa, thought I had plenty of room. I actually hit the bike and knocked it over and broke the brake lever. And I've tried gambling and buying some stuff from swap meets and, and whatnot to see if I can make it work, and it just won't. I really need this style here. And what this is, is this is actually an AP Lockheed, maybe you've heard that, uh, master cylinder setup, and I believe I'm like 99% sure for a while there, Carrie Andrews. I'm gonna tag you in this. You, uh, what's the? T oh, I can't see where we are in the video. I have to find the timestamp. But this, uh, there's that AP symbol, and there's the Lockheed disc brake. But they were doing a restoration, or I think, or I think they called it a classic series, and brought these back for a period of years, and that lever may work. I've tried buying it from the UK, but matter of fact, I found there's one on someone's shelf right now on an eBay ad and they won't ship it to me because they refuse to ship to the U S. So it's kind of a bummer, but if anybody knows where, uh, they might have a contact that deals with this, uh, this old stuff. It wouldn't have to be just, um, Ducati because these were a popular upgrade on, uh, Norton's bsa triumphs as well but if anybody has a contact i would love to get that and i'd love to rebuild this master cylinder and keep it original um it's been a while since i messed with it but it worked when i parked it okay anyway super super freaking cool but do me a favor put in the comments like what you think of the bike do you like this old stuff you just stuck on the new uh could you imagine seeing this roll down the road in 1975 i mean it's supposed to be this right one of these two right so, you know, this is what you'd get on your showroom floor. But can you imagine pulling into a gas station or a bike night and seeing this this um, this bad machine in there? I think it's really super cool. Um, David, I, you you made my day. You just inspired me to uh, make sure and get this back on my list of uh, bikes to mess with this year. I'm still unpacking, uh, trying to get set up from being gone for so long at the da at the Daytona event, uh, working vacation, if you will. So anyway, I just thought I'd check in. Uh, what a awesome phone call, just totally out of the blue. Uh, love staying connected with uh, people that we have these great stories with. So David, you made my birthday. That was freaking awesome. Uh, anyway, hope you all enjoyed the storytelling. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else about this bike, so I'm going to let it go. Make it a great day. As always, keep wrenching, keep riding, keep being awesome. Talk to you later. Bye.